Well, hello everyone and happy holidays. Thank you for joining me this evening. If you're watching from Ontario or a similar time zone, I'm Anna Olson. Welcome to Oh Yum. And this is the finale of the holiday live stream series. You know, I have to kick things off with my shout outs and thank yous. I'd like to say thank you to Organic Meadow for sponsoring today. And I have some exciting news before I get into the regular um, hellos to all of you who come back time and time again just to get into baking. I have two contest winners to announce um, from Organic Meadow and Rolling Meadows contests. So, I'll announce and the Organic Meadow people will reach out to you, Natalie Lebeau from North Bay, Ontario, because you will, um, you have won. And from the Rolling Meadow team, our winner is Lindsay Freeman from Toronto. So the uh, dairy will reach out to you separately and congratulations. I would like to say a big hello to all of you who join me on such a regular basis. Of course, mom, and I'll see you in a couple days. Um, hello, Esme, and hi to your sister, Lori. <laughs> uh, hi, Bonnie, Suzanne, I'm so glad you're excited about uh, today's live stream. Kathy, Mary Beth and Peter joining me from vacation. Darren and Debbie, maybe not on vacation, but so glad you're signing in. Aunt Cecile, that's not my aunt, Lisa's Aunt Cecile from Edmonton. I think I've covered everyone, but I know you're going to tell me that you're viewing and where you're viewing from. Today's recipe is really something special, sticky toffee pudding. And, you know, I said hi to my mom at the top. This is her favorite holiday dessert. So I know I'm going to be making this again. What is sticky toffee pudding? It is British based and it looks like gingerbread, North American gingerbread. It is nothing like North American gingerbread. It is very important to distinguish one from the other. Oh, look at these notes come flying in. Michael, we have so many people just saying hello, happy holidays, getting into the spirit. What I wanna do is get my date soaking. I have 300 grams, so if you chop up um, dates and measure two cups worth that will weigh approximately 300 grams. I'm using medjool dates which are really soft easy to chop. Um, you can use conventional dates if you wish. It really doesn't affect the recipe at all. I have a cup of boiling water that I'm going to pour over the dates and I'm going to need this pot again for the sauce I'll be making later because I'm not just making one sauce to serve with this sticky toffee pudding. I'm making two sauces, two sauces. And so now the dates are going to soften up in this hot water and to help them soften up even further. And also this will contribute to the darker color of the sticky toffee pudding as it bakes. I'm adding three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. I am adding baking powder to the recipe, but it goes in with the dry ingredients. The soda goes in with the dates because it softens up the skins and tenderizes the dates so that they will break down as they bake into the sticky toffee pudding. So now I can set this aside. I will be able to work with it warm, but I'll set it aside and now it's time to get into that base batter. What I love about making a sticky toffee pudding is it's so elegant. It's perfect for the holiday, holidays. Wesley, thank you for signing in. Nice to see you again from New Jersey. I hope you had a good birthday last week. Um, and what I love, back to the sticky toffee pudding, I love that it is, you can make it by hand. The tools aren't complicated. It's filling. It is also a fantastic make-ahead dessert. So the first thing I want to do is measure out my quarter cup or 60 grams of butter. I'll just cut it into pieces to get it into my bowl. 57, so close. Oh, one gram over. You know what, it's the holidays. I think we can handle that one gram extra. 
And now to the butter, I'm going to add whoop, my 150 grams of granulated sugar. So even though sticky toffee pudding has a dark gingerbread-like color, that comes 100% from the dates, not from using a brown sugar. We're gonna save that for the toffee sauce. So now I'm going to cream the butter and sugar together just by hand, and it won't be fluffy and it won't be smooth because the proportion of butter to sugar, there's far more sugar than there is butter. It's only a little bit of butter in the recipe, so you won't find it's terribly creamy at this point, but you wanna make sure it's evenly combined. So I'm going to make sure that I have, um, oh, Cherry is saying hello to Rob, and um, Cherry, I saw you also said hello to Michael too. And if I can take a moment, Cherry, I wanna ask, answer your question you asked early in this thread. And that is the um, question about the difference between a pastry cream and a Bavarian cream. So a pastry cream is milk, thickened with egg yolks and usually cornstarch or it can be flour, but um, Bavarian cream is more like a creme anglaise. May, it can be made with milk or a combination of milk and half and half cream, but then it's set with gelatin and whipped cream is folded into it. So that sets it that it can take a shape in a mold slightly different from a diplomat cream which is a pastry cream that has the gelatin and the whipped cream and then that's pipeable and holds its shape so a very good question um oh wesley you like working with creamed butter too oh when it's so smooth and easy to handle is anyone making shortbread this holiday season and if you have any shortbread questions please we don't have to just talk about the recipe that's right in front of me. I'm happy. Um, oh, here, Ahmad is asking a question about the cloves. I had a touch of clove to this recipe. He's asking, can you use whole clove and add it to the boiling water and strain it? That is a great idea. 100% you can. So now I've combined my butter and sugar. And as I mentioned, it's not going to be creamy to start the sticky toffee pudding. It's going to be rather granular. But now I can add my two eggs and you want to make sure you add them one at a time just to give everything a chance to blend together easily. If you add the two eggs at once, it's just going to take you longer to combine it. If you'd rather pull out the electric beaters for this recipe, you can certainly do that, but don't feel you have to. There we go. And you're right, Queenie, this texture is when you're creaming butter and sugar together, it has that wet sand consistency. But now it's starting to fluff up as I add my eggs. Um, Uzma is asking if you can use anything else to soften the dates instead of baking soda. You can soak them for longer if you wish and leave out the baking soda. Um, also that boiling water is a great opportunity to add flavor. You could add um, tea, you could use infuse tea flavor into it instead of just using straight water if you wish. All right, now my eggs have been added. It's time for the dry ingredients. This is how simple this recipe is. It is not complicated. I'm just gonna move this forward this way a touch. I've got my all-purpose flour. I mentioned that I put the baking soda in the dates that are soaking, but I've got baking powder here, just a little bit of salt for seasoning. And traditionally, a sticky toffee pudding has no spice. Unlike a North American gingerbread, which is all about the ginger and the cinnamon and the nutmeg and the cloves. But I will admit, I like just a pinch of clove. Not that I want to taste clove in it, but I find the clove balances beautifully with the dates. And it just, the two complement each other so wonderfully. Now what I'll do, I'll bring back this mixture. I've got my sifter over here. Oh, Marianne, Earl Grey tea to soften the dates is a brilliant idea. I'm sure it was delicious. I give this a quick sift. And you've heard me talk about sifting. While it's a good habit to have, if I'm making simple cookies, I don't always sift. But whenever I'm making a cake like this, and this counts as a cake, a cake style dessert. I definitely sift all the time. 
And now I'll just stir this together until it's combined. Oh, hello from Ireland. Do you make sticky toffee pudding in Ireland? Is that a popular choice around the holidays? It seems to be growing in popularity here. I, I find year over year it's becoming more and more popular. Um, oh, Nathan, good question. Uh, when it comes to cookies, especially something simple like a drop cookie, I find you don't always have to sift, especially if your end goal is a cookie with a dense center. So while I like to lighten the flour and combine the ingredients, the baking soda and salt and other things, using a fork, I don't need to aerate to allow lift like you do a cake batter. And in fact, if you've seen my other videos, you know I like to smack the tray of baked cookies right out of the oven to collapse them and really create that dense, chewy center. So great question to ask. Hello everyone, we've got a good crowd joining us, well over 200 people from everywhere. I love um, seeing you right from everywhere and I see you, Rui, as well. Don't you worry. Okay, so I've got my flour combined. Now it's time to bring those dates back. And you won't see a remarkable difference when they sit. So don't expect them to look all of a sudden like a puree or having absorbed all the water. You can see here, there's lots of liquid left, but believe me, it has softened. So what I like to do when I add the dates is I don't add them all at once. And I'm going to add all that water too. That's why you measure the water to soak the dates because they're going into the cake recipe. And so now the first addition softens up the batter. Remember, this is still warm. So it's going to dissolve the sugar that's in the batter a little bit. Which as I stir this and add the dates, it's a funny story. You know, when it comes to creating new recipes, you learn things, how little differences can make such a dramatic change to the end result of a recipe. I was playing with a recipe for apple cider donuts. These are baked apple cider donuts. And I made the recipe and I made it so quickly I wasn't thinking I should have been paying more attention to the temperature of my ingredients. And it was a nice fluid batter and I was able to pour the batter into my donut pans to bake them. And then my recipe tester tried the recipe and she was so surprised to find it was a thick batter and she had to pipe it in a piping bag. And I thought, did I type the recipe wrong? And I went through and I was like, no, all the ingredients are the same. And didn't I learn the difference was she cooled the reduced apple cider that she added to the recipe where I added it hot and that made all the difference. So this is one of those cases and I say in the recipe, you can ha work with the dates still warm to help give you a sticky toffee batter that is easy to handle. And look at all those dates in there. But you'll notice it is a very light colored batter but you're accustomed to seeing sticky toffee pudding have a, a really nice deep brown color to it. You're not adding molasses or any, that's a gingerbread ingredient to this recipe. Trust me, this will transform as it bakes. And that's part of the function of the baking soda as well. I've got my square pan all set. If you wanted to, you could bake this in individual ramekins. And in goes the batter. I've lined my pan with parchment paper. Um, Cherry is asking, can you use this as a thumbprint filling? I think it might be a little bit tough as a thumbprint filling, though you could puree dates. I wouldn't add the baking soda. Thank you, Michael. Much appreciated. Now this is ready for the um, oven which I've preheated to 350 Fahrenheit, that's 180 Celsius. And what I love about this recipe is it only takes 30 minutes. Now here's the surprise. I'll, for a dessert that is so moist, you might expect that I drop this into a water bath to gently cook it so that it doesn't dry out. But the moisture from those soaked dates basically moistens this cake from the inside out and it stays fresh for days. So I just put it in the oven, no water bath, 30 minutes, 
and it will be ready. And of course, you know, I have one already set for you, but while that bakes, I want to make two sauces because being the holiday season, you want to dress up your desserts if you're making a plated dessert. And a, a dessert like this can feed nine to 12 people depending on the size of the portion. So I love that, a one pan dessert that feeds so many and it's so elegant. Now, the first sauce I'm going to make is a toffee sauce. And that is, this is again, a sauce you can make ahead. So you can fully cook it and then reheat it when it's time to serve. Now let me get my burner going because it always takes a couple minutes. There we go. And so this is a combination of whipping cream. And I've measured out a cup or 200 grams of demerara sugar. You can use dark brown sugar or demerara. And the reason I want that is that color intensity. So for this sauce, again, trying to keep it simple, we don't have to cook or caramelize sugar to a certain point to make a caramel sauce. We want that earthy brown sugar taste, but I want that color intensity. So that's why I favor the demerara. And in addition to that, for a little glossiness, beautiful aroma, and it's amazing how a little honey adds such a big punch of flavor. I'm adding just a little bit of honey to this. And now I'll bring this up to a, I don't need all those burners going, there we go. I'll keep an eye on this. Have you got stove cam on? We've got all four cameras ready for the holidays. And I'll bring this up to a simmer. And Michael, I'll ask your favor, or everybody you're watching, if I'm facing this way and you see this starting to boil up, <laughs> let me know because it will. That's one of the things you have to watch for when you're working with cream. If you bring it to a boil unattended, it will go everywhere. And that's not what you want to do on your Christmas holidays. Spend your time cleaning up this mess. So we're going to let that warm up. And while it does, I can start my second sauce, which is an eggnog creme anglaise. Now, if you joined me two weeks ago, I made those fabulous eggnog creme brulee desserts, and you can see every recipe from this entire series. If you're just joining me for the first time, all of these holiday recipes are available right here on the OEM channel. I am taking delicious organic meadow eggnog, and I'm thickening it because this is created to be a beverage, so a little thinner, but I wanna thicken it a little bit, so that way it's a rich creme anglaise that will just accentuate the toffee sauce and the dates in the sticky toffee pudding. Traditionally, you would put a, um, a thickened cream, like a Devon cream, a clotted cream, or a creme fraiche, and then with the warm toffee sauce, you've got the cool cream, and it sort of dissolves in with the warm toffee sauce as you take a bite of the sticky toffee pudding. We're accomplishing that as well, but using eggnog instead. So all of the flavor has been worked into the eggnog itself, which makes the process easier but I still want to thicken it by separating. I'm going to separate, let me use this for my whites. <laughs> Yolks here, whites there, shells there. I need three egg yolks. Let's see if I can read your notes while I'm separating eggs. There we go. Um, can you make a basic cookie base eggnog? Cherry, I'm not sure what you're after there. Do you want an eggnog drink that's the flavor of a cookie, or do you want to add eggnog flavor to a cookie recipe? In which case, that is actually very easy to do. If you take your basic sugar cookie recipe and add nutmeg to it and a little rum flavoring, it will taste exactly like eggnog. And then I add the same. Um, I actually have a recipe for an eggnog cutout cookie, and I make an eggnog buttercream um, that I fill with it. Oh, everybody's getting into the Holly spirit. It's great to see your personal stories and memories. This is absolutely fantastic. Lori's asking a good question. Can we use a dis different kind of fruit instead of dates? You know what I might offer? I would say figs 
Dried figs would work beautifully here. I'm gonna put my eggnog on the stove while I'm answering that question because we have to warm it up. There we go. Um, figs would definitely work and I don't know how you feel about prunes. I think they're an underrated fruit. They're sweet, they're delicious, and I think prunes would work fabulously. I don't know that you could officially call it a sticky toffee pudding, but I think it would be delicious and festive, no matter. Now, I've got my three egg yolks and I'm going to add to that just, just a little bit of sugar. And it's more to protect, it's less about the sweetness because of course the eggnog has just the right amount of sweetness. It's more about protecting the eggs so when I add the warm eggnog to it, they won't curdle or split. I will also have ready a bowl and a little strainer. Just like sifting your dry ingredients when you're making a cake, it's always a good habit to strain your sauces, especially your custard sauces, after they come off the heat. Ooh, Wesley's asking for a rum cake recipe. That would be a great idea. Now I'm just going to, oh, you know what? I'm gonna take a moment and I've got many whisks. My toffee sauce now, the sugar is dissolving. You can see that color, but I want to wait for it to really come to a simmer so that it cooks together. And as I mentioned, you can make this, bring it up to the boil, cool it down, chill it, and then just reheat it when you're ready to serve it. Now my eggnog is warm, I'm just gonna check, yep. So now I'll slowly introduce the eggnog to the egg yolks to enrich. Once you add a little, then you can pour it all in. Oh, immediately I can smell that combination of the nutmeg and the rum flavor in there. This all goes back into the pot. And now I'll, I think I'll switch burners, Michael, because I know sauce cam can only do one sauce at a time and I'm making two sauces. But you can see I'm just hitting a simmer on my toffee sauce. Can you see how the bubbles are just starting to break the surface? So I'm gonna slide that over, but I'm gonna watch both sauces at the same time. There we go. So I'm just thickening, cooking up the egg yolks to 150, essentially. Basically, when you see steam, I can see steam breaking the surface. Within about two minutes, those eggs have cooked enough because you've introduced that hot eggnog to them that it doesn't take long on the stove to thicken them up completely. Uh, Oh, we've got someone watching from, Teresa watching from Aklan, Philippines. Aww. Oh my gosh, thank you for joining me. First visit to YouTube. We've got lots of videos to catch up on, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, and we've got people watching from Toronto and Mexico. Um, oh, and here's a good question from Uzna. Uzna, Uzma, oh, what did I say about the, here, you gotta see this. There's that cream I was talking about. So. You don't want to leave it unattended at that point. I'm going to pull it off. I'll pick up my, I've taken my eggnog sauce off the heat. So just as a reminder, this is my toffee sauce. And it's up to you. You can stop at this point. To make it a, um, a hard sauce, you can add spirits to it. That can be a bit of brandy. It could be rum. Rum matches with the eggnog. Or even whiskey if you want. And it is very hot and very loose at this point, but as it cools down a little bit, it will thicken up. So to finish at answering your question, Uzma, the difference is brown sugar, by a local definition, is refined fully and has molasses added back to it. So light brown sugar has a little molasses added back to it, dark brown sugar has more. Demerara is different where the refining process stops. Quite often it's organic, but it stops before it's fully refined so that molasses is naturally present. And you'll find it's grainier and it's a little wetter in consistency when you buy it. Okay, 
my sauce has thickened and now I'm going to strain it. Now the creme anglaise I like to serve chilled where the toffee sauce I like to serve warm. So I'm going to set this aside, tidy up a little bit here. There, make it disappear. <laughs> and I have some sauce, of course, just like the sticky toffee pudding that I've already made and chilled. So that too is ready to serve. And now let's cut our portions of sticky toffee. Here it is out of the oven. So you saw how light in color that sticky toffee was when it went into the oven. And this is why I want you to be confident that you have done everything correctly when you see that pale color. As it bakes, it gradually turns darker and darker. Now I'm extracting my sticky toffee from the pan because it's really an, another tip. If you've got any non-stick coated pans, you never want to cut on the surface because the minute you cut through that coating, you could develop rust or marks and there's no going back from that point. So always use either a cutting board, pull it out of the pan. And that's why I like to use the parchment paper. I'm gonna go for some generous slices here. And Bonnie down the street knows she's getting what's left here. I don't find it's necessary to trim away the end pieces, though if you're serving this as a plated dessert so everyone's look looks okay, um, you can do that. It is best to serve this dessert warm. And so what I like to do, it's amazing, the microwave is actually one of the best ways to reheat sticky toffee pudding. Or if you want to warm it in the oven, what you do is keep it in the pan, cover the pan with foil and put it in a really low oven, no more than 300 Fahrenheit or 150 Celsius, just to warm it through. And it's amazing, it won't, it, the moisture comes right back. Uh, if this freezes well, so you can make it this week, freeze it, pull it out, thaw it, rewarm it to serve for the holidays when you have people coming. So now let's get to my, I'm gonna turn off all my burners here. How's that framing, Michael, for the camera? Good, okay. And you can really see that moisture. No crumbs at all, it cuts so easily. And now this hot toffee sauce just adds more moisture to it. And I'm going to, going to put it right on top. Let some of it soak in, let some of it pool around. I do recommend a plate with a lip or a bowl for this. If you wanted to pull out ice cream to put on top, but do realize it's going to melt quickly. Make one more dollop there I'm getting a fork for you too Michael <laughs> uh, I need my chilled sauce and now I'm going to pull the chilled sauce all the way around and of course at the first bite it all gets swirled in but you can help it along a little if you wish. Michael, would you like a sticky toffee pudding? You almost need a spoon for all this sauce. Oh, Suzanne, you're asking for a Queen Elizabeth cake recipe. You know, I don't have one, but it's been on my list. I know that's a popular dessert. Um, for some reason, it's very popular in Montreal and I'd love to explore that. So thank you for my, what, my first recipe on my 2024 to-do list. It really is decadent, Kathy, with both those sauces. Oh, and then they kind of swirl and blend together and mm, I love how the toffee sauce is just absorbed by the sticky toffee pudding. Easy to make, 
just so much. It smells so good in here. That combination of the dates, the eggnog, the toffee sauce, it smells like the holidays in here. I'm feeling very festive. I've had so much fun presenting to you over the last five weeks. I can't believe, I can't believe the time has gone so quickly. And here we are just, oh, let's not even talk about, it's, yeah, less than two weeks till Christmas. I have a few things to do. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I actually do have a fair bit of holiday baking to do. But I'll stay in touch. Rob, the channel manager, Michael and I are talking about all our big plans for what we want to do right here on the Oh Yum channel for 2024. So you can count on us being back to share more delicious recipes and being able to spend some time together. I wish you and yours all the best for the holiday season. Thank you to Organic Meadow and to Rolling Meadow as well for sponsoring this series. And I'll see you in the new year, everyone. Mwah! You're the best bakers. Mm. It's so good. Oh, why have one sauce when you can have two? Honestly. Mm. I should have got a spoon. <laughs>